So one of the things that I absolutely hate about left-wing cities, especially those who have embraced criminal justice reform, is the fact that we have so many stupid ordinances, so many stupid restrictions and regulations that are often enforced against law-abiding citizens, even though they're not enforcing the serious crimes or similar restrictions against people that they have deemed to be above the law, the homeless individuals, and all these other people who violate the rules of our society actually obstruct things like sidewalks, and those whose violations do lead to other downstream consequences in cities like Los Angeles. And a perfect example of this is this local news story that I think I found out of KTLA's news station or whatever, where they're finding a business owner for the position of his sign and of course for hanging an American flag in front of his storefront. You can't have him block the sidewalk with an American flag in front of his storefront. Pay no attention to the fact that homeless encampments are given God-tier rights by the city of Los Angeles. Now, we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about it. We're going to slice it up, throw it on the barbecue, and serve it with the side of peppercorn. Peppercorn? Probably not peppercorn. And right after we get into the, the, the actual justice word, right after we thank the members who signed up over an actual justice warrior.com slash join. I will, give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And those of you who are listening via the podcasting platform, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. The sign need to be right there. Granada Hills business owner, Eric Ayer says the city of LA has a double standard. No matter what I do, it's always like, it's always illegal. No matter what I do, it's always illegal. So here we have a guy, he's been in business for 15 years, 15 years in California, in Los Angeles in particular, and he's had enough with code enforcement. And for those of you who are unaware, if you've ever tried to run a storefront, talk to your barber, talk to people that are actually trying to produce, trying to have a sustainable business, and they'll tell you, especially if you're in a left-wing city, that these bureaucrats that write tickets essentially target these businesses as a form of revenue generation because for some reason when you do it to a business it's no big deal nothing to worry about at all and I think one of the most comical aspects of this is that his sign if you saw it and I'll play it again for you right here the sign need to be right there was only an inch or two inches too far into the sidewalk for him to get the violation from code enforcement from the city. And the reason they have this is because you are not allowed to have obstructions on the sidewalk. People need to be able to walk. And some of these codes are related to people with disabilities who need more room to operate their wheelchair safely on the sidewalk. So you can understand the purpose for this. You can understand exactly what this is all about. But let's think about this in terms of Los Angeles. Let's just show some of the images of what's going on with homeless encampments and whether or not you think that this might be a bit more of an obstruction to what you're seeing with this guy's sign on the sidewalk. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Sean, listen, a sign, that's not a constitutionally protected right or anything like that. Unlike the God tier right granted to the homeless by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal that says bestowed by the Constitution from God himself, they have a natural God tier right to camp in public and you can't obstruct that. And in fact, if you try to move a homeless person's encampment or touch their property, you would be charged with theft and all manner of other charges because you're violating the right of those gods. This guy's sign does not fall under that category. Therefore, therefore, he should be fined to the fullest extent of the law. He should be harassed by code enforcement. He should be hit over and over and over again while he's just trying to start a business. Now, now, you probably wouldn't say that because you're in my audience, but that seems to be the legitimate position of the state of California and of the city of Los Angeles. But at the same time, they don't deal with crime, with real crime. Eric says while homeless encampments are blocking entire sidewalks throughout LA. Now, the business owner here is incredibly right. And the reason why I know for sure he's incredibly right is because I quite literally just made this point about how ridiculous the enforcement is. And they cut directly to somebody's tent on the sidewalk just down the street that gets no such enforcement. And again, what are the standards in Los Angeles? What are the rules? And everything this person does, and a lot of business owners express this sentiment, seems to be a violation. His business, Motor Styles on Chatsworth, has been visited by code enforcement agents four times in one month. I mean, just think about it. There are homeless encampments on this street, 
within view. The local news just got to pan to the right and they could see the tent in the middle of the sidewalk and all that. But there's no enforcement against them. There's no law being violated. Even when they commit crimes, oftentimes they're just re-released back onto the street. You will get punished if you dare touch their tents, if you dare touch the garbage that they're stacking up on the street. But he's got four different code enforcement visits within the same calendar month. And what's his crime? Trying to run a business, trying to advertise. What happened to a warning? What happened to code enforcement saying, hey, you know what? We're out here. You're technically a few inches off of where you need to be. Just just move it over. Just, just keep it out of the sidewalk. This is the line. You keep it across this line. And then maybe after a couple of violations, you'll do something. But of course, this has to be backed up by the fact that you've already cleared out the encampments. Because until you do that, it seems rather crazy to try to make a big fuss about this sign. But again, that is leftist governance. That is the state of California. That is the city of Los Angeles and every major big left-wing city to a T. There's a great book called Three Felonies a Day, which basically says due to the excessive nature of the regulatory state, all of us would be criminals if they just wanted to enforce something against us. And this definitely reminds me of that. And although he's not being charged with a crime, he's being fined excessively. And again, he's trying to operate under a climate where businesses are fleeing the state of California due to the fact that they're allowing criminality to go unchallenged. I mean, think about this. His sign being one inch over the line, huge deal. Four visits in an entire month. If somebody came in and committed an armed robbery and he called the police, I don't even know if the police would show up in that kind of situation due to the fact that they're deprioritizing property crimes in the city of Los Angeles. They have a district attorney who wouldn't even prosecute this case, but you bet your bottom dollar that they'll go after him for this and for his American flag. Yes, we're going to get to that part. I think that this is going beyond ridiculous. The problem is the placement of this A-frame sign, which is apparently touching one inch of city property. This is a problem because, again, when you own a business, you are a partner with the city. So you make money, the city make money taking tax. So if my sign don't block the right away, it's not breaking any law. Why are they coming and even talking to us about it? Now, I can hear this guy's accent. I don't know if he's an immigrant, but I will say immigrants have a very entrepreneurial mentality and they come into the United States of America because they believe in the United States of America. This guy's not coming off like a right wing conservative who's like taxation is theft. He's saying, hey, I want to partner with the city of Los Angeles. I want to do well, which generates tax revenue, and that allows the city to do well and hopefully crack down on things like criminality. It's a very idealistic view of the United States of America, a very idealistic view of the relationship between citizen or business owner and the government, and I don't want that ripped away from him, but unfortunately, I'm not in control of that. The city of Los Angeles seems to be hell-bent on doing that themselves. This guy's doing the right thing. He just wants a little bit of advertisement for his business so people can come in. There's a decrease in foot traffic due to the explosion of homeless people in these areas, and it has to be a big struggle to run a hobby shop in the middle of LA with all of those problems that we've talked about on this channel so many different times, especially when a lot of these hobbies, people buy the things on Amazon and they would never even imagine going into a storefront because of it. And if they wanted to go into a storefront, they would likely be deterred by the actual obstructions, which of course are the homeless encampments, the open air drug markets, all of the various problems that LA seems less concerned about versus his sign placement. The sign, which really isn't blocking the sidewalk, is one of two problems Eric has had with code enforcement agents. The other is this American flag. Claim that this is not a flag, this is a sign. Last time I checked, this is uh, a sign. Yes, yeah, a big sign. It's a sign that we are in America. And this is the land of the free, and this is what this thing represents for me. Yeah, that's right. They're not only finding him based on taking out a tape measure and figuring out that his sign is one inch on city property, they're also fining him for violating the signage policy for the posting of the American flag. And I just want you to think about it. We just got past the month of June. I didn't cover any pride stories because I'm not really into this overemphasis of the LGBTQ double XIIP community. But if this were a pride flag and if he were being fined for putting this forward, if that were to actually happen, there would be so much outrage from the general public about how the city of Los Angeles is suppressing the marginalized speech of people. But for whatever reason, code enforcers legitimately feel justified in targeting this guy 
for hanging his American flag on what is obviously an American flagpole. And this guy's like, it's just a sign that we're in the United States of America. He's proud of this flag. Again, that immigrant mentality that I think is so commendable that we see for so many people that come into this country, even if he's not an immigrant, I'm just going based on the accent and some of the context clues, is just so lovely and it's being ripped away. Imagine coming to America or having your family come to America and believing in this country so much, believing in your city, believing that as a business owner, you're here to serve the community and you're a partner with the city because if you succeed they have tax revenue and then some doof from code enforcement comes in they fine you for your sign and then they say that american flag that's an illegal sign as well we're gonna fine you double for that it seems absurd it seems like hanging an american flag of all things should not be controversial should not be unprotected speech and yet in this situation it is and this guy can't understand it sometimes it takes somebody who's just a regular person trying to function in the regular world to point out something so obvious for all of us to see it and i hope that what he just said right there had the same impact on you that it had on me when I heard it. Reaction from Eric's customers? It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, they definitely have to get their priorities straight because um, there really isn't, you know, they're not doing a very good job. I've been betrayed by the city. Eric says complaints to code enforcement, city council, and the mayor's office have been ignored. Right now, I'm looking at like to move to Texas or to Arizona. So this guy's considering moving to Texas or moving to Arizona. I do like that the B-roll of the local news cut to other signs that appear to be further in the sidewalk than him. I don't know if he's being targeted by an angry neighbor or something like that. These kind of petty disputes and using the regulatory state in order to resolve these petty disputes are quite common in our society for some reason. People are absolutely obsessed with these ticky-tack rules, but I will say... It would be one thing for them to force it clean across the board, but obviously they're not doing anything at all related to the encampments, the actual obstructions, and the actual problems in Los Angeles. I just did a deep dive into the homicide numbers in the city of LA. I talked about the dramatic increase that they experience. I talked about how this is due in large part to the fact that changing sentiments plus an actual budget cut to the police caused 6 to 8% of LAPD officers to quit and or resign from the force. And in terms of recruitment, they're just not replacing them fast enough. This is creating a giant problem. We also have the lack of prosecution. Gascon, the district attorney of that area, is refusing to do his damn job and get people behind bars so they become repeat offenders, and that has an impact. I also talked about the fact that homeless people are just allowed to run amok, and by the way, it's not good for them either. I highlighted specifically how many homeless people are the victims of homicide in Los Angeles and how that number is increasing. There's this myth that that is the compassionate route. There's this myth that the business owner is the true villain, and in reality, only the good, kind-hearted people that work for the government are the solution, and I think this story is proof positive of just the opposite. The regulators, the code enforcement, they're the villains of this story. The city officials that decided that they want to direct time, energy, and resources to the position of this guy's sign and to him hanging an American flag rather than the open-air drug markets and the rise in homicide that they're dealing with are the actual problem in this situation. And if this guy moves, Los Angeles will be worse for it. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on all my social media. Support me via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the petty tyrants of LA. Till next time.